Hi everyone, it's Henry here. Now we've very kindly been sent a copy of the new Age of Sigmar box set Dominion by Games Workshop. So what we're going to do is use it to create a bunch of tutorials which hopefully can help you guys on the models when you get them and on your other projects as well. To start off with, I'm going to take a look at these Stormcast Annihilators. A few years ago, I read a novel by Nick Horth called City of Secrets, and it's set in the Realm of Beasts. It's a really cool novel about witch hunters and things like that. And in it, they talk about a storm host or a stormcast chamber uh, called the Knights Excelsior. The city's called Excelsis. And they're in all this white armor, and they're really sinister, and they're really cool. And I've often thought about giving them a go and seeing what a scheme would look like. And when I found out that the new edition, as it were, of Age of Sigmar is going to be set uh, predominantly in the Realm of Beasts, or the story is, and Excelsis is going to be one of the main cities, this seemed like too good an opportunity to pass up. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how I would go about painting an army of these. So army painting means every stage can only take a couple of steps. It needs to look really good on the tables, no matter what the light is. But also, we're cult of paint. We love painting. We want to enjoy the process and we will be proud of it when it's sat on the shelf or when our friends ask if they can pick the mini up and have a closer look. So that's the goal. Now let's get on with it. Over a black primer, I'm going to base coat the whole model using Tamiya Field Blue. Now I've thinned this about three drops of thinner, always using Tamiya X20A thinner with Tamiya paints. So three drops of thinner to one drop of paint. I'm just giving the whole model a couple of coats of this until we have a solid, smooth base coat. And this is what we're going to work up from to create our white armour. This might be a slightly different sort of take on, on the white armour. Um, I want it to be quite stylized, uh, quite fantastical, I guess. Um, so we're going to really work on quite a limited palette, lots of blues and I think lots of purples. So over the field blue, I've now taken Tamiya Flat White and I've thinned this more than the blue, so four or five drops of thinner to paint. And now I'm slowly going to build up layers of this white over the blue to create different tones and effectively highlights and shadows. There's not going to be any further stages with the airbrush on this paint, so this is our final colour, as it were. It's pretty easy on the shield. All I needed to make sure I did was put the shield up against the model and remember what orientation it's in, so that it's light at the top and dark at the bottom. Not so much an issue with this guy because he's holding it straight up and down on the ground. But on the other two, they've got it at an angle on their sides. And then for the main body of the miniature, I've picked a light source at the front and a light source at the back. And as usual, I picked top right as we look at it. So everything that's facing that direction or is nearer that light is going to be brighter. So as long as the light matches up across the miniature, so it looks correct across the model, that's absolutely fine. I'm not going to get bogged down in realism or anything like that, especially when we're doing things like uh, fantasy miniatures. But it doesn't need to be realistic or anything, it just needs to make sense. That's what's important. So in the shadows we've got really quite a dark, deep grey-blue, and then we'll pure white on our highlights. I'm just holding the shield up next to him just to check I've gone to the same level of brightness on it. I think it could do with one or two more coats. That's looking right. Now the secondary colour on these guys is a blue, so I've taken GW Cantor blue, thinned it, I'm just going to base coat the indents of the shoulders with the blue. I think it took me three or four coats, thin coats with this paint to get a nice smooth finish. Probably the most nerve-wracking stage to be honest, because um, if you do get a load of it on the white then you've got to go in with your brush and fix it up. It's not the end of the world by any means and I did that across the model. I suppose it's the one downside really to painting uh, a white scheme. White schemes really don't need to be any more difficult than any others, but perhaps you need to be a little bit more careful when you're painting them. A little bit neater maybe. So once that's dried, I give the whole model a couple of coats of gloss varnish. I use Vallejo polyurethane gloss. This is to prep it for the next stage. So I take an oil paint, this case Winsor & Newton Artist Oil Colour Payne's Grey. You can see it's this lovely blue-grey colour, so like a darker version of that field blue. And I mix it up with a mineral spirit, in this case Winsor & Newton Sansador, which is an odourless mineral spirit. And we create an oil wash. A fairly thin wash as well. You can see I'm applying it over here now. 
the colors there, but it's not super strong. And as I said earlier, I want to go for a fairly limited palette and I'm using the artwork from the box cover of the golden uh, Hammers of Sigma paint job. I'm just, I love how much of it is just gold. A few bits of the other colors, but the majority is gold. So I wanted with this scheme for the majority of the armor and everything to be white. Which means this step's really fun because we get to slop it over 90% of the miniature. You can see capillary action just drawing it into all those recesses. Next up, I'm going to take a grey, uh, in this case a colour called French Mirage Blue. I'm going to take a white, a uh, Vallejo model colour white, this is my favourite white with a paintbrush, a hairy brush. And then I'm going to use a little bit of glaze medium. Um, we're going through our traditional two weeks of summer in the UK at the moment, um, and paint's drying out really, really quickly. And I find if you just thin it with water, it can dry out a little quicker. So if you've got an East Day drying retardant, or glaze medium, or Lamium medium, and anything like that, just to thin the paint down a little bit, um, it's worth using, it will, it will extend your work time more than just water will. Now what we're going to do is work our way around most of the edges. And we're sort of edge highlighting, but we're not worrying about being super neat with it. And the reason I've got the grey on the palette is some areas where it's really, really dark, I maybe don't want to put a pure white edge highlight on there. So I'll mix a tiny little bit of the grey in. And as well as doing our little edge highlights, we'll put a few scratches and scratches in over the armour. Just helps give it a bit of life. And again, because we're sort of painting on damage at the same time as we're painting on edge highlights, we don't need to worry about being super neat. If we accidentally do a little blob, it doesn't matter, it's just a chip. This is probably the most time consuming part of the whole paint job, but it's really, really worth it. And by the end of it, the, the model's gone back to looking like it's white armour. Um, there's much more definition there between all the panels. Um, I just, yeah, I really enjoy this stage. So I hope you see the results from it. Also went over the blue parts, just adding a little bit of white into the Cantor blue. Just do exactly the same. You can see there, more definition, really nice looking armor color we've got going on now. And on the shield itself, I did a lot more of the little scratches, as you can see. So I want my armor finish now. I'm going to use an ultra matte varnish. This is Amma by Mig uh, Lucky Varnish Ultra Matte. I don't dilute this, just straighten the airbrush, 25 psi, lovely jubbly. There it is, dried, and I've painted all the other details in black. I'm really, really pleased with how this has come out. But let's see what it looks like when we get some of the other colours on the model. So for the leather, I'm going to use one of my favourite paints, or current favourite paints, GW Barracknar Burgundy. Always looking for an excuse to use this at the moment in my paint jobs. Uh, and thankfully, or luckily, whatever you want to call it, uh, the leather in the artwork for these guys is this nice burgundy colour. So a couple of diluted coats of that just to get a smooth finish on all the leather parts. She's got a belt, it's got quite a few straps around this model as well, you need to go hunting for them. And then to highlight it, I'll just use the white that's on my palette and mix a little bit in. If we just use one colour, and it's not always necessarily white, it could be an off-white, whatever, in this case it is white because we're painting a white model. But if we use that white to lighten up our other colours for highlights, it just saves us getting other paints out, it's a little bit quicker, and because the areas are so small that we're working on with this, any slight change in colour between models is not going to make any difference, so there's nothing to worry about. Now for the gold parts of the model, I'm going to base coat this uh, in scale 75 decayed metal, which is like a metallic brown colour. Gives us a slightly warmer finish to our gold that we paint over the top. And the main gold I'm going to use is P3 Blighted Gold, one of my absolute favourites. It's got a lot of flake in it, this gold. Uh, unfortunately, the lighting washes the metals out a little bit when you film it, but I hope it will show up a bit better in some photographs. I'll just go over the majority of the scales. Yeah, it's not showing up a ton there. And then we'll give the armour a thin wash, uh, so a diluted wash of GW Druchia Violet, so a purple wash. I've thinned this, I don't know, 50-50-ish, 
Stuck my brush in the pot, put it on the palette, stuck my brush in my water jar, mix that in. So it's about 50 50. And this I find gives us a lovely sort of warm gold. And as I said earlier, limited palette, blues and purples, I think. And then just to bring a little bit of the shine back, because the purple wash does dull the finish down, I'm going to use uh, a slightly brighter gold. In this case, I've used uh, elven gold, but it doesn't really matter on this one. Just using a teeny tiny bit of it. If you don't have a brighter gold than what you've got, you can always mix a little silver into your gold to, to lighten it up and you could use it for this step. Now for the hammer, I'm going to use a Scale 75 black metal. It's got a nice blue tint to it, so again, keeping to that sort of blue, blue and purple theme. The metallics were drying out <laughs> really fast, so... Uh, keep going back to the palette a lot more than usual. Now I'm going to give this a wash and this time it's a 50-50 mix of uh, contrast paint black templar and the purple wash from before so a black and purple mix. I wanted a little bit more definition on the silver that's why I've added the black in and if it does pool anywhere we can just clean that up with our brush that contrast paint gives us a bit more work time in the mix. Once that's dry I'm going to take Games Workshop Grey Knight Steel, again a blue silver colour. I'm just going to edge highlight all the silver to bring back that reflectiveness and then I'll sort of dry brush uh, over the, the little bumps that are in the, the, the uh, metal as well. For the little gems we've got on the model I'm going to use a purple, in this case uh, Valero Game Air Hex Lichen, but any nice dark or rich purple will do. And then to highlight them, you guessed it, I've just added a little bit of white into that. And with these you've got sort of four faces on them, and you want to lighten that face that's closest to your light source, and then work on the little sort of cross ridge that's on the model. Add a little bit more white, work towards the centre of it, and get this nice little reflection. You can see once we've got these other colours on the model, so it's, uh, it's really starting to come together. Can all look a bit snowblind sometimes when it's all just the one colour. Take your time, it's little details like this, it's really worth it. But so far we've managed to stick to that sort of two or three steps, uh, or two or three stages for each step. And here I was like, brilliant, time for the final step, but not quite. Now I've put them together, I've realised that the shield, whilst the limited palette's cool, it's a bit dull, and I think it looks like I've forgotten to paint something on the shield. So I'm just going to paint the central boss of it uh, in the gold. So the actual last stage is a little bit of battle damage. Now I'm using a brown, I'm using dark rust here because I had it on my palette from a, another project I was working on. Any brown will do and I'm just testing it out on the back of the model somewhere low down we won't really notice because I wasn't I really liked the model at this stage I wasn't sure if it needed this so I thought I'll just do a little bit on the back here I didn't want to sponge it on because I want to be very sparing with the chips I really like the idea that now I'm, I'm a big fan of the fact that Age of Sigma 3 is going to be swamp hammer as it were uh, you'll notice a lot of videos I've been doing recently have been quite swampy themed that was pure serendipity I'm, I had no idea it was going to be swamp themed so I'm chuffed to bits about that but I love the idea that the Stormcast are relatively immune to all of that decay and corrosion and everything but they're still going to get a bit of mud on them aren't they so I'm not going to put rust or anything like that on the model I think I might do a few little chips that some of the dirt and grime does get into and, and, and colour but not necessarily corrode so I was happy with how it looked on the boots, so I'm going to work around the model. I'll focus predominantly on the shield and the areas I think where he's going to get smacked about. So shield, pauldrons, uh, probably the, the lower parts of the legs, that kind of thing. But I'm going to leave his face and his chest area pretty much untouched. Uh, and then I'm going to take a brown oil. In this case I used Van Dyke brown, really doesn't matter, any brown will do. Thin this down, made a wash just like we did earlier with the Payne's Grey. And I'm just going to wash this in around the areas that I've done those little chips. So again, I don't want it to look super dirty or anything like that. But it's nice to have a little bit of sort of atmospheric weathering uh, on the model. Helps tie it into the base, tie it into the surroundings. Now 
But here he is done. I think we've achieved our objectives in that it's going to look great on the table, uh, but it's also quite a rewarding miniature to look at in hand. A lot of people sort of go on about white being a really difficult or complicated colour to, to do. I hope this has proved that it really isn't. Perhaps the only thing, as I mentioned earlier, that is different is you maybe need to be a little bit more neat with your painting. But other than that, in many cases, it's fewer steps than painting other colours. Um, yes, an airbrush obviously helps a lot. If you haven't got an airbrush, you know, spray the model white with a rattle can and use something like the GW Contrast Paint. That'll give you a, a nice enough starting point. And you can do everything else we've done in this video in exactly the same way. One of the nice things about painting a Stormcast is that I now, barring the sort of mounts and the critters and the monsters in the army, I now know how I'm going to paint the majority of it, uh, which is really exciting. You know, if you're sitting down with an army project, you've built the stuff out of the box, you've built a few of the new kits, you can get it ready and get going. And I would certainly get everything in the army done up to the end of the armor stage in as few as, you know, batches as possible. Just get a nice consistent finish. So I hope this tutorial's been helpful and I hope you've enjoyed it. There's going to be plenty more coming from us over the next few weeks to do with the Dominion box set. If you have enjoyed the video, it really helps us out if you hit that like button. If you're not already, hit subscribe and hit the little notifications bell as well. It'll let you know when those videos are coming out. And lastly, tell your friends. If you think they'll enjoy the content, point them in our direction. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.